Hi there, dear listener. Lazlo here with a quick pre-roll message for you. Before we get started, I want to let you know there are all kinds of convenient ways for you to support my efforts to bring you all these podcast shows on Chinese history, Chinese sayings, and tea history. If you go to my website at teacup.media and click the support button at the top, you'll find a bunch of ways to show some appreciation. There's Patreon, where you can get early access to new episodes, exclusive content, and an invite to the Teacup Media Discord channel, and more. CHP Premium, it also has early access, exclusive episodes, and ad-free versions of the entire CHP back catalog. Plus, there's several other ways to donate to the show as well. Check the episode show notes for a link to that very page. And my deepest thanks for listening and supporting me and my humble efforts. Hello again, everyone. Laszlo Montgomery here for the seventh time this heroic season three, bringing you yet another flavorful and utterly satisfying Chinese saying. Another Cheng Yu for your growing collection. Last episode, we traveled to the Western or former Han Dynasty. This time we're at the commencement of the Eastern or later Han. The dynasty is back in business after the fall of the Western Han and a brief interregnum with Wang Mang. If you caught China History Podcast episodes 19 and 20, you know what I'm talking about. For now, at least, uh, in this episode, there's a good emperor on the throne in Luoyang. And this good emperor is one of our stars today in this Chinese saying. His surname was Liu, like all the emperors of the Han Dynasty. Liu Xiu was his name, and he's best known to followers of Chinese history as the emperor Han Guangwu. He was the first emperor of the Eastern Han Dynasty that lasted 195 years. Our Cheng Yu today has an asterisk next to it. One of those again. There's the four-character version that I'm going to show you. And then there's also a version that contains a total of six characters, like last episode. We'll look at both of these versions, but I want to assure you, if you could only remember the four-character variant, that'll work in every case. Yo means to have. Zhi means will or determination. Yu zhi, to have the will or determination. Jing means to finish or complete something. And cheng, in this case, means to accomplish or succeed. Jing cheng means to finish and accomplish. And we quickly look at the longer six-character version, Yu zhi zhe, shi jing cheng. Yu zhi zhe goes from to have the will to the person who has the will, adding that zhe particle to the end of zhe changes the meaning from the will to the one who has the will. Shi jing cheng, shi means matters, or affairs, things to do, business, and again, jing means uh, to finish or complete, and cheng to accomplish. Jing cheng, finish and accomplish. So you lay it all out and you get someone of will, matters, finish, accomplish. Sounds awkward when you put it like that, but string it all together in Chinese. Yo zhi zhe, shi jing cheng, or the simpler four-character version, yo zhi jing cheng. That's the Chinese equivalent to our English, where there's a will, there's a way. This saying just didn't appear out of nowhere. Someone famous said it first, and it got written down in one of the official histories that survived to our day. The Ho Han Shu, to be exact, the Book of Later Han compiled in the 5th century. Last episode, we looked at the Qian Han Shu, the, the, the book of former Han. This is the book of later Han. It mentions in one of the chapters at the start of the Eastern Han, there was a scholar named Gang Yan. At an early age, he was wowed by the mounted soldiers he once saw pass through his village, swinging their swords and looking all, you know, soldierly-like. And even though he wasn't born into that world, this is what he aspired to. His father was a military figure around the Zhangjiakou, Beijing area. So using his father's connections made it easier for Geng Yan to make the transition from aspiring scholar to soldier. So when Geng Yan heard or read that Liu Xiu, the future Guangwu emperor, was recruiting men to fight in his army, he saw his chance and he took it. And in the course of several years after joining up, Gang Yan made a name for himself, and he won many victories and received accolades from Liu Xiu. So the year 28 CE rolls around, and Liu Xiu 
who's now the Guangwu Emperor, and he has a major headache on his hands. He fought his way to the emperorship, and after that long interregnum with Wang Mang, he put the Liu clan back on the Han imperial throne. But there was still a whole bunch of mopping up to do. Chiang Kai-shek would have the same problem 19 centuries later. All over the north of China, there were these warlords who had set themselves up and had dug in deep during the period in between the Western and Eastern Han. So if the Guangwu Emperor was going to unify the whole of China, these guys had to be dealt with. The Emperor called on his best guys and said they had to go out and handle this, quell all these warlords and bring those lands back under direct Han imperial control. Gang Yan was ordered to deal with one of these, named Zhang Bu, who was based in and around Shandong. It was no secret that Zhang Bu's warlord army was one of the bigger and more powerful ones. Gang Yan nonetheless devised a plan to take him down. Zhang Bu's army had the numerical superiority, but Gang Yan attacked him in three places, surprising his army and bloodying their noses. But Zhang Bu so sure of himself due to his numerical superiority, he didn't think much of Gang Yan. Although he got hit hard, Zhang Bu, with his 20,000 troops, felt certain he could get rid of this guy. So the showdown between Zhang Bu and Gang Yan happened in Linzi, the ancient capital of the Qi state located in present-day Zibo, Shandong province. Just to the east of the city, the two armies clashed. In the first encounter, with the warlord Zhang Bu personally leading his troops into battle, Gang Yan got hit by a flying arrow that went straight into his thigh. Ouch. The fighting was fierce. It was a lot more up close and personal back in those days. Try as he might, Zhang Bu's army, with its numerical superiority, still couldn't overwhelm Gang Yan's forces. Someone had sent word back to the palace in Luoyang, that Gang Yan's army was pinned down and on the verge of defeat. Guangwu Emperor, upon hearing this news, called at once for an army to head east to aid Gang Yan, and the Emperor said he would lead this army himself. Meanwhile, back in Linzi, Gang Yan's army was back on its heels. His officers, in their despair, said Zhang Bu's forces couldn't be beat. The best course of action was to pull back, regroup, and wait for the reinforcements that were on the way. Luoyang was about a 10-day march from Linzi. Gang Yan stood before his men and ordered them to prepare a sacrifice and a feast to welcome the emperor. He asked his men how could they possibly welcome his majesty without first completing their mission. If the emperor arrived and Zhang Bu was still a threat to them, well, all it would do is make the emperor worry. Therefore, he ordered everyone to gear up lock and load, and they were going to go out and deal with Zhang Bu decisively. In this way, when the Guangwu Emperor arrived at their camp, they could receive him victoriously and tell him he had one less headache to deal with. Gang Yan led with determination, stamina, and exhibited before his troops this sheer will to win. It served as a model for his men who, before long, rose to the occasion, beat back Zhang Bu, and soundly defeated his army, sending the warlords surviving troops fleeing for their lives. By the time the Guangwu Emperor arrived in Linzi, Gang Yan was just finishing up, and you can't imagine what a celebration they had. The Emperor regaled Gang Yan, comparing him to the General Han Xin of the Western Han, whose victories on the battlefield gave Emperor Wu, Han Wu Di, the solid foundation upon which to grow the country. Guang Wu told Gang Yan he had done the same as Han Xin, and now the Han Dynasty was more secure. And it was here where the Guang Wu Emperor, in praising Gang Yan, said the magic words, If someone has the will, Yo Zhi Zhe, they'll find a way. Shi Jing Cheng, where there's a will, there's a way. And this was later shortened to Yo Zhi Jing Cheng. And these four characters, these four syllables, describe someone who will brave every disaster and setback, fight against the odds, overcome any obstacle to achieve what they set out to accomplish. Yo Zhi, if you have the will, Jing Cheng, completion will result in success. Thank you, Emperor Han Guangwu. Well, there it is. 
This is Laszlo Montgomery signing off from lovely and scenic Los Angeles, California. I'll see you again soon, I hope. I'm guessing in another seven days for another heroic episode of the Chinese Sayings Podcast.